The year is 2007 and I had to spend a horrific amount of money on a new vacuum cleaner. Let's have a look at what I bought. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? No, it's not 2007 and you should all know well enough now to know that I would never spend a horrific amount of money on anything. Yes, the Mina Revolution 500 is all done. It looks a lot better now. You can see that it is shiny. The metallic paint work, because it is paint on this, has come up well. There's a few little scuffs and scratches, but nothing too bad really. Although there are some areas of damage, sadly. This isn't, hasn't been a very well loved machine, it's been a well used machine. And if you look under there, the guy who I bought, oh there we go, the guy who I bought it from had a gravel driveway and I think it was a car cleaning vacuum for a fair old time. But, a good machine polish has it coming up lovely. Even, that panel there got a polish because, luckily, that panel is actually perspex. The blackened printing is stuck on at the back. So I was able to really compound that down and make it look fantastic. The other thing we lost is the Revolution 500 logo, which was already mostly off, as you know. And I got the rest of it off my finger. I'm, I'm not going to keep it because it just looked awful. Moving on down the machine, we have the three tools which now look much better. It's only really the dusting brush that wasn't fantastic before. That was only because it was full of fluff. So they're now hunky and dory and looking good. The bag compartment, again, it wasn't too bad internally, it was just externally, so it has actually the same bag that I got it with. The post, the pre-filter has been cleaned and the post filter was fine anyway. I don't think, because it's been used with genuine bags, don't think it had a very hard life. There's no smell to that. And when I took the top bit off, all that was through the machine, well, there's nothing through the machine. It's very clean. The fans are very clean on this as well. But there was just a bit of carbon dust under there. There was no filth, no dust, nothing. So I've kept that. And yeah, that's about it. The only other thing is the spring on the back of this catch isn't fitted because it is very, very fiddly and I didn't want to break it. It wasn't fitted anyway to start with, so we haven't lost too much. But I'd rather the machine be usable because if I break that, that little catch is going to be horrifically expensive to buy for what it is. It'd be cheaper to buy a whole new one of these. Really? The cable was covered in paint. I actually did that last night. So that is nice and clean. The only other little annoying thing is that I think I need to take the panel back off and realign the rewind pedal. Because it only, if I really push down hard, it just about does it. But it's not too bad because the auto reverse switch works fine. So we can get away with that really. So yeah. There's the main machine. Right, let's get the hose out now. If you remember, when we looked at the before video of this, it ran, but there was no controls from the hose at all. It literally turned on. None of the buttons on the hose did anything. I've even polished that look, because that's in the same, the same style as well. What I think the problem was, you remember I said it was the back door wires? Well, I don't think it was. When I had this end of the hose apart, you undo those two screws there, and those two screws there, and that all pulls off, and that bit all pulls off, and this bit unclips. The three contacts for the rings, there's like contact rings around here so it can all swivel, they were caked in gunk. I, I took a picture for the rebuild thread but it took about 19 cotton buds and a fair bit of lighter fluid to polish all that up 
And it now runs beautifully. So I think me opening and closing the back door didn't actually do the wires, it jolted this into just providing contact to run the motor. Because obviously meters run on live, neutral and data. So I think the data was the issue, because obviously it ran, the live and neutral worked. It was the data that didn't. So now all these buttons work really well. The only other slightly annoying thing is the, the swivel mechanism on this is really quite stiff. I think I might have bent the contacts too much, so I need, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. It's quite a faff, really, to keep everything together and get it together. So we'll have a look at that, but for now it works. I also haven't been able to fully get all of the gunk from in there off. So I can't... There's, there's no point in trying, really. What have we got here? We have the telescopic handle, which I haven't touched. You can't get it apart at all. Well, if you, you might be able to, but I really didn't want to break it. So, there's a couple of little chips and scuffs, but if I hadn't actually polished the paintwork off it yet, do that. But it works. It's not horrific. I'm not going to do anything with that at all. The last thing was the floor head. Now, this was filthy and still is a little bit at the sides because I just can't get it off because it's actually it's where it's scratched in. The brushes, I've tested this, hence a little bit of hair. The brushes are very good. It's been used on a hard floor a lot, as you can probably tell. But, all in all, it's not too bad. The old Seb 217-2 came up really well. It looks better than it did once I've sifted it, washed it and polished all the paint off of it. Because I put car trim gel on it. This has got Chemical Guys Trim Restore all over it, which has helped phenomenally. Really? So... Ooh. So there we go, really. This Mila Revolution 500 from 2007 is ready to be tested. So let's do that right now. So she's all plugged in and ready to clean. But we need to turn it on and you start by pushing the on button on the machine, which puts that light on, which means it is in standby and corresponds with this light here on the handle controls. To turn it on, you just move That down and up like so. Now it didn't actually tell you on the machine what the setting is. They don't light up. You have to sort of guess, really, based on this. And there's no LEDs under there. The only three LEDs are there, there and there. So that's obviously supposed to do that. I think different, this is the base revolution, I think. There were a couple more, so they either have the symbols there or they lit up as well, but never mind. So we'll put the handle in, like so. And then when you turn it on, the head should turn on as well. But if it doesn't, you just push that button there, which is the brush roll on off switch. And the light goes green.
turn that down so you can hear me over the machine. But it does have, not a bit too far, a pause button. So if you park the tool at the back, if I can do it right, there is a micro switch in the parking slot that basically just stops the machine. Although it seems a little bit jammed on this one. Hang on. That's a noise, we'll have to look at that as well. There we go. Might not be clipped in properly, so we'll try that. So yeah, basically that pulls in the stocks of machines. We'll just turn this off. And there we go, we can pause it clearly, really. Right, let's have a go with these small tools. Right, so we'll give this lamp a quick dust with the dusting brush. So, we'll keep the machine on quite low. That low might be good enough, really. And um, you could use it as such. Marvellous. This isn't the nicest dusting brush me to do. This is, I'd hate to say the cheap one. It's, it's all right. It's a bit, it's, it's quite soft, but they do do a lovely horsehair one. Of which I have one here. This is off my mother's vacuum. So as you can see, they do look different because the insert for the horsehair has to be there. And that's just a lot softer. I mean, there's not a horrific amount in it, I'll be honest. But yes, this one is much softer. The same physical size though, if I turn that round properly, same physical shape and size, the Mina logo is in a different place, but yeah, these are the dusting brushes. Now, being a Mina, obviously, all the tools do fit each other, so I've got my mother's tools out, because obviously she has a Mina, and the tools will fit. The wand for a normal machine will fit inside the Electro Plus, but obviously won't turn it at all because well, the power's not plugged in. But on that same vein, the Electro Wand will fit the Parquet Floor Brush. It will fit the combination tool. I think something come with the Bogo combination tool. And if you're feeling really silly, it will fit the cat and dog turbo brush, which actually has pretty much exactly the same brush roll, bar obviously it's got a belt thing. Um, it's the same width and actually a bit taller. So yes, you can use any tool with the electronic revolution. Also, because it's an electronic head, you can have the suction on full low and the head does still spin at full speed, so it's not really quiet, you can hear the head more than the machine, but if we put the, that one on, it's barely turning at all, and it stops when you put it on the carpet until you turn up the suction there you go, that's starting to spin on the carpet now on setting three but these 
setting mat to really do much good. So the main benefit is that the parquet floor bed works. So you can do hard floors because the problem with this electro tool is that it won't be very, it'd be, well, it'd be good, but it'd be clunky for hard floors. You really want the proper brush for that. Another little gripe that I've got with this electronic version is the handle. Now, ignore the fact that the hose doesn't rotate because it should, but it's very clunky. Um, it isn't very flexible. Whereas the hose end on the bog standard Miele, the S5, is a lot nicer. In fact, the one that would have come with the non-electronic version of this is nice. It's just more nimble. So you can get into more corners than you can with this because it's bigger because obviously it's got to hold the power settings. I mean, if I try and line them up, you can see that there's a big difference. I mean, the hoses aren't compatible between these two. I can't do anything with that because obviously they've got completely different fittings because they're completely different generations. But yeah, not the most nimble machine for doing delicate little things unless you have this little micro hose. Right, do some more vacuuming. <laughs> go then, the Mila Revolution S556. What do I think of it? Well, it's very good, I'll be honest. They cost a lot of money and I can see why. This one had its life saved by being abused with genuine bags. When I bought it, the guy said, oh, put a bag in it for you, mate. And I cried inside. I went, oh, God, what's it going to be? But it was the bag that's in it now, a brand new genuine one. So that's good. I'll be honest, it works very well as you saw with that little demonstration with rice and porridge oats. Because the brush roll carries on spinning at full power, it still does an alright job because the airflow is pretty good even on low. I think it's 300 watts on low. It did the job. I mean, there's a medium setting which is economy, which is what me to say, reading the instruction manual that I found online, what to use it for. So, it's actually my first working electronic meter. We had that very top of the line red 5000 last year or the year before but that was just too far gone to do anything with really. Whereas this one works fine and now that the hose can be controlled or the vacuum can be controlled from the hose it's very good indeed. Not quite sure I utterly love it especially compared to the non-electronic ones. The problem I find with the electronic vacuum cleaners is that the hose is always more clunky because it has to carry the wires. I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, it's got a swivel on that side. It should have a swivel on the top side, but I'll fix that. But the hose itself doesn't... It doesn't bend as well. It doesn't flop around as well. The wand is heavier. Turbo brush is fine. That's the same size. But obviously it's the compromise you pay for having a fully electronic machine and I quite like it 
and it's come out very well indeed. Got away with that very luckily. I've just got to do a few little bits, fix the core rewind, see if I can stop that switch at the back from jamming up, and try and fix the swivel on the home. It, it turns, but it's not very smooth. And that in turn is making that not turn fantastically either because they, they, both ends need to swivel so the hose can do what it needs to do really. But there we go, my £15 Mila Revolution 500. Starting to get a little bit of our Mila collection now, aren't we? So that's good. And yes, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.